What's up guys? So I recently stepped into the Sony ecosystem after being a Canon shooter for over a decade. At first glance, I like everything that Sony is doing except for initially I did not like the menu system. Looking at it made my head want to explode. And that was because I would go in the menus and there's, I don't know, like eight tabs and there's nine pages on every tab. Um, it was a lot to wrap my head around. But then I dug a little deeper and started researching what each thing does and then I stumbled upon Sony's picture preset tab and this opened up a new world of possibilities for me. So in today's video we're going to talk about what exactly these picture profiles do and I'm going to break down each one for you and I'm going to let you know how you can utilize these to get the best possible image out of your Sony DSLR or your Sony mirrorless camera. So if I had to draw a graph of how today's video is going to go, I would think it would be uh, equal parts fun and equal parts informative. So we are, I think, right there in the sweet spot, if you can see that. Um, so this is going to make you guys a better filmmaker, a better content creator, and just an all around better shooter. So let's get started. So first off, what is a picture profile? A picture profile when using a Sony DSLR or mirrorless is essentially a set of parameters that you adjust within the camera or certain settings that you adjust in order to get a desired look or to get a desired output from the camera. So lucky for us, Sony has made this incredibly easy, which on the surface it looks extremely complicated, but it's not. Because they have set up 10 user presets that we can fully customize for fast access, for different looks, depending on what we want our final image to look like and the type of project that we're working on. So in here you have everything from standard presets to cine presets to log profiles to your basic just movie style um, standard camera crap. But we'll get into what all of those different presets mean here in just a bit. First, I want to mention the importance of even setting a picture profile. The presets adjust the color and the vividness of your image while recording. So effectively, it means that, that uh, those parameters or those colors or settings that you put in place will essentially be baked into the final image uh, when you hit the stop recording button. Now, this can either be a great thing or it can be a bad thing depending on if you know what you're doing or not or I guess how lucky you might be. This can and will drastically either speed up the amount of time or slow you down in post trying to get that final look um, if you don't know what you're doing. So pay attention, this is how it works. So for example, shooting with a preset like the one we're shooting with right now, HLG2, um, this is one of my favorites. This right here closely replicates what you see with the human eye. Um, it's a form of HDR, but it's not necessarily going to be that um, over-processed look. This is going to sort of replicate, like I said, what you see with your hum human eyes. So this is something that you'd use for YouTube videos, something that you're not necessarily going to give a stylistic grade. Um, you're not going to try and make it look like Fight Club, something that you want a fast turnaround time with, um, social media, anything like that. This is an easy one to use. It's not taxing on your system. Um, basically set it, forget it and upload it pretty much as compared to something like log. So if you're not familiar shooting log footage, then when you go to use this preset, it looks very washed out. It looks very strange. And you might wonder why anybody would ever even use log footage. Um, well, that's the way it's supposed to look. It's supposed to look washed out because it's basically preserving your highlights. It's preserving your shadows and it's going to give you greater flexibility uh, when you're in your editor to bring those colors down. It's not baking in any of those parameters, any saturation or anything. It's allowing uh, just a flat picture for you to make all the changes that you need to as opposed to like HLG or a Cine preset or like one of the standard presets that are baking in all this information. Um, which you can still adjust, but you're not going to have as much flexibility as you would uh, with something like shooting in log. So if you know it's something that you're going to want to edit the crap out of or stylize or it's something you can take a lot of time with, then shoot in log. Um, but everything else I would recommend shooting in one of the Cine presets or uh, HLG. So what does all this mean and what can all of it do? Alright guys, so if we hit our menu button up here, we can go into our menu in the first page up here, or the first tab, the 11th page in. If you scroll away to the bottom on your scroll wheel, you'll see picture profile, and that's um, necessarily, I guess, the easiest way to get into it. Um, if you have your function but if you have your function button set up right here, I have a picture profile set into, I guess they call them quick. 
I don't know, quick functions is what I call them. And then I can select my picture profiles through right there. Um, so it brings you to the same menu. So you can go up and you can turn them all off or you can scroll down one all the way through 10. And each of these are set up uh, individually with different parameters. Um, standard when you first get the camera, um, like this one here, you can see his HLG2. Um, and then you could go through and you could customize all these different things about HLG2. Um, you could go up, this one is S-Log3, um, so on and so forth. So what we're gonna do is we're going to um, go through and we're gonna talk about what each one of these does. Here's the one I'm currently using is um, Cine 4 and the other one is HLG2. Um, but let's talk about this. So black level is the first thing you'll come to. If we click into this menu, it allows us to pick a value from negative 15 all the way up to 15. And what that does is, you, I don't know if you can really tell, but I had the lens cap on, but it's, it's brightening that black in the background a little bit. So what this does is it essentially, um, it basically means how black do we want our blacks to appear in the image. We are adjusting the contrast here in the camera for this look. So if you want dark blacks, increase the number. Uh, this is what people refer to as crushing your blacks. If you want a smooth gradient from your shadows, decrease the number, um, you know, and, and by decreasing, you're actually going up because you're making the blacks less deep. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's pretty simple, right? All right, um, so getting back out of there, our next stop is gamma. So as you can see, this one's set to Cine 4. Gamma can be a pretty complicated thing to understand, but to put it simply, it's basically the way your image is perceived by your camera versus how the image looks from your eyes. For example, our, our eyes don't process light the same way a camera does. Um, I'm gonna throw up some graphs right here. I mean, if you ever wonder why sometimes you see an amazing sunset or a landscape and you take a photo and you're instantly underwhelmed, you can blame gamma or perhaps yourself for not setting your camera right um, for good gamma control. But you know, gamma in this case relates to how the tonal depth of your image will be baked into your footage once you hit the stop recording button. Um, therefore, each option here will give you a different look. You have uh, you have your, your standard movie mode. That's just basically what every camera comes. It's just your standard. Um, imagine just turning on a video camera from you know the 1990s. You're gonna get that kind of look with this. And then this is specifically for stills. This is basically just if you were to fire up auto mode, this is what it's gonna look like in uh, still uh, photography type setting. And you have Cine 1, Cine 2, Cine 3, Cine 4, you have Rec 709. Sort of like your standard profile, like your movie profile, but these are a little bit more, I guess, sort of like replicated, like I was telling you HLG is, of what your eyes see, but this is, HLG is more along an HDR type of look. Um, and then you have S-Log2, S-Log3, those are your two that are gonna allow you to have the most um, most leeway in adjustments when you're in post. Those are the two I was telling that look very washed out if you've never messed with those. And then you have HLG1, HLG2, HLG3, and just HLG. Um, so there's a lot to work with right there. Um, so we'll basically get back into these a little bit, but the difference between these gamma settings range from subtle to drastic. Here's a quick shot of each ungraded. I'll show you real quick what each one of these look like, moving all the way from movie mode all the way down through HLG3. So take a look at that. So going back into our menu, the next option is black gamma. This setting controls the gamma curve and allows you to alter the gradations of your shadows um, and your blacks. This is different from black level. Think of this as fine tuning for your black level as this works in tandem with that and gamma. You can set it to wide, uh, middle, or narrow. Um, I'll put up a chart here so you can get a visual, but basically this controls the gradient and the luminance of your black. Setting this to narrow keeps your blacks um, closer to being crushed or closer to black and the wide setting starts extending 
Extending those blacks to gray, a middle is obviously just a point set in between the two. It all depends on the look you're going for. So if you're going for a very, you know, 1990s uh, fight club, uh, seven type of look, you know, where you're crushing your blacks and you're making them very black um, with really no gradient roll off, then definitely you want to go to uh, narrow because you want to keep those blacks um, as tight as possible. Um, and then you also have level. Uh, level here just basically means how extreme are you going with that setting? Like, do you want your blacks to be crushed, uh, you know, all the way, so plus seven, or do you want them to be crushed a little bit, or you know, vice versa? Like, do you want your, do you want them to be crushed, but do you want them to be not as bad, you know? And then that works with all three different settings. Or do you want them, you know, not as bad, meaning do you want them to be crushed, but not as, as harshly, I guess would be the correct word. Um, so let's come out of here. Next option down is knee. Knee can be another difficult one to understand, but it all relates to compression and prevents overexposure by limiting blown out areas of your footage. Um, you have a couple different options here. You can set this either to auto or manual. Auto automatically adjusts the knee max point, which is your white level. You could set how low or how high you want this auto feature to take place. So if we go to auto, we can set our auto set, uh, our sensitivity to mid, high, or low and our max point. So this is letting me know like, how high do I want that white point to be? Do I want it to the, sensitive, the sensitivity to be mid with a max point of 100% white or do I want to set that down to, you know, like a lower percent? Like, will I allow it to blow out 90% of the way instead of 100% of the way? Um, and then, you know, if you go to manual set, uh, this obviously opens up an entire new set of options for you, allowing you to fully set your max point as well as your sensitivity and your point and slope. Um, this will be a huge contributor for controlling your highlights. The camera does a good job at controlling this. I keep mine in auto, but just so you can look at this, you have point and you have slope. I'll put a graph up here that might help you visualize what this means a little bit better. But this is just uh, literally sort of how our black gamma was for um, controlling the gradient of the shadows. This is sort of the opposite of that, but with your highlights. Um, how well do your highlights roll off? If you've ever heard that term, this can help you control all of that. So the next option is color mode. So let's go through here. Mine is obviously set on pro. Um, this option controls the color space and the part of the gamma curve. You have a lot of options here. I use pros. I think it accurately represents the ending image that I'm going for. Each of these settings will result in a different look, so to speak. So choose what you like best. You can obviously still grade it um, different in post, but getting your image close in camera is important because the less you have to do later, the better. Um, so this is all just something you can play around with and see which one you like the best. So hit menu to go back, saturation. So this controls how vivid or how faded you want your colors to appear. Values go from negative 32 all the way up to positive 32. So there's a lot of headroom to play with here. Um, I currently have mine set at negative five because I don't want to be too oversaturated or too, too uh, of a faded look. I like to be able to bring that back up just enough in order to um, have full control of you know what I want it to look like. Um, so if you increase the value, so if you're going up the scale, you're gonna increase the colors and they're gonna get richer. Um, if you decrease the value, your colors are gonna get more faint. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory, but worth mentioning, you can again adjust this in post depending on which way you go with it in the camera. You may have to do more to get your desired look later on. Saturation is simply just a measure of how different a color is from a neutral gray of the same brightness. So, um, you know, it's the same as using your saturation slider. If you've ever done any photo editing, it's the same thing. Um, just think of it as if you're going up in those numbers, think, it, think of it as going further to the right with your slider, as opposed to going to the left, you're going closer to, um, closer to gray, uh, so to speak. So um, the next one is color phase. This will adjust the hues in your footage or the actual color, whereas saturation adjusts the vividness of each color. This will adjust the actual color itself. So basically changing these will change um, how your camera interprets color. This is particularly helpful when trying to match footage 
from another camera, from another manufacturer. For instance, trying to match skin tones between Sony and Canon can be a nightmare. But if you get in here, you can really um, dial those in. Um, and it'll really help you with um, not only matching colors, but just getting colors correct under different types of lighting. I just leave this at zero. I let the camera take care of it auto. It does a pretty good job. Color depth, this is all about luminance. Let's say you want your reds to be more redder. Um, then you could go to R, which is your red. This is your RGB and your CMY. Um, so I could click this. If I want my reds to be more red, I'm gonna go up. If I want my uh, reds to be less red, I'm gonna go down. Same with your red, green, blue, cyan, uh, magenta, and yellow. I mean, it's the same as all these colors here. You know, you can go in and you can individually adjust each one. And like I said, that is just going to allow you to control um, the vividness and depth of color individually. So the next one down is detail. Um, this effectively will give your image a more crisp or soft look depending on which way you go with it. You can keep it on auto or you can um, or you can go on in and adjust a ton of other things ranging from your vertical and horizontal detail to your black and white balance which considers your high and low luminance areas. Um, this is your vertical and horizontal balance. Here's how you change it from, uh, from auto to manual. Um, I keep mine on auto. Um, black and white balance, this right here will basically determine your high and low luminance areas, luminance areas in your footage. It's like using the clarity slider in Lightroom, but the slider is on steroids and it has multiple personalities. You can do a lot here. Um, so I leave it on auto, but you can go through, you can adjust the crispening of your photo, the highlight details of your photo. You could go through and you can limit it to how much you want those adjustments to be limited to. Um, like I said, your black and white, your vertical and horizontal, and whether you want it on auto or manual. And then after detail, you can copy these. Say I want to copy that one onto another um, profile. That way I have all the same settings and say I just want to change my saturation or I just want to change my color depth. You can do that or you can reset it all the way back to what it came um, from the factory. So one thing I like to do is I like to go to the second tab, second to last page over, and go to my function menu set. And this is basically when you hit your function button here, it allows you to have all these quick options. So on mine I have drive mode, um, that allows me to change it from self timer, interval shooting, you know, that whole type of thing. I have my focus mode, so if I click that, I can go to my focus area. You can change all these that you want. There's 15 different pages of things that you can you can put on there but um you know this one for me is focus mode um focus area gamma display assist that's something i want to talk about briefly um your iso your touch operation silent shooting my grid lines which will put uh your which will put your rule of thirds up on your screen your white balance i have my picture profile there that's what i wanted to show you guys so if i hit my function button See right here, it has my picture profile one already selected. I can go in there and I can change that real quick and I don't have to go on my options. Um, and then you can see, where is it? You can see right here, my picture profile two is selected. That way you can see it. Um, so if you wanna switch real quick in between like, let's say Cine 4 and HLG2, like I like to do, then I can uh, just have that quick under my functions. So one thing guys I want to touch on here real quick is uh, our gamma display assist. So I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but like let's say we go and we take, um, let's say we shoot a log profile. So let's find a log profile, S-log2 right here. So say we are shooting S-log2. And uh, you can see how that looks sort of washed out. But if you go and we turn our gamma assist on, then it allows us to go and essentially we have assist log auto, S log assist two, which what that does is it basically, let's turn it off. You see how that looks kind of washed out. Let's go to S log two. What that does is it gives us a good indicator of what this footage will look like once we grade it. So basically it kind of color corrects it 
on our display for us to give us an accurate um, an accurate readout of what it's going to look like if we color correct it back to normal. Um, and that's to help with that washed out um, type of look I was telling you because sometimes when you're shooting it's hard to judge what color your colors need to be or um, what your footage will actually look like um, just by seeing it all mostly gray using the S-Log profile. So your gamma assist, your gamma display assist will assist you with that. Um, so that's a good indicator. That's a good thing to use if you're shooting S-Log. So I just thought I would throw that in. So that's about it guys. Sony really gives their users a lot of flexibility and control over their final image and that's one of the reasons I wanted to come over to this brand was because it seems like they're really catering to the people that are using their cameras as opposed to other brands that have like um, four tabs, um, very limited parameters that you can adjust <coughs> Canon and um, you know, I think that's what, what it's all about is enabling the users of your product to do bigger and better things and not handicapping them and um, not packing features into the cameras. Pack as many features into the camera as possible. And I understand that there's higher end cameras for a reason, but this camera here, the a6400 has some of the same features like the a7 III has, which is the higher end version of this. But with that said, uh, Sony cameras and the picture profile presets to use them correctly, it does come with a learning curve. I hope watching this video really helped you guys in understanding what they do and what they mean. And if you have to come back and watch this again, uh, definitely do that. Don't feel like it is something that you need to get in one sitting of this or something that you need to get um, or something that you're going to understand overnight because it is complicated. I hope I gave you guys a good explanation of what all these settings do and how to utilize them depending on what it is that you're shooting. So if you made it this far guys, thank you for watching the entire video. Um, comment below and let me know that you made it and also let me know what your favorite picture profile to shoot with is. Hit the buttons below guys and remember as always, just go shoot. I can't reach it. Just go shoot.